The call went out just before 1 p.m. An officer had been stabbed. At 1.10, police backup units arrived and rescued the wounded officer. By 1.15, police surrounded the place with at least a dozen squad cars. They also called in several Medic 1 units to stand by. At 1.55, police began clearing out neighbors. A woman was brought out carrying a small baby. Then at 2.03, an officer escorted another woman and another baby to safety. In the meantime, officers were trying to locate the suspect's wife. At 3.20, she was brought to the police command post about 100 yards from the standoff. Because negotiations weren't going anywhere, commanders called in the SWAT team. They posted themselves at all of the strategic locations surrounding the apartment. Just before 4 o'clock, police rescued another neighbor. After the rescue, they broke out the front window of the suspect's apartment. And for hours, the standoff continued. Daryl David, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. We want to calm the situation down, reduce the hostage, hostage taker's uh, anxiety level uh, so that reason will take over and emotion die down so that he can uh, become calm and realize what the situation really is. Basically, develop the friendship and trust of the hostage taker or the barricaded man. Let him know that you truly are concerned about him and that you would like him to reason with you rather than meet the other faith with his meeting force of the police department. At 5.15 this morning, police reported some movement in the apartment where they believe the suspect was holding out. It was the first time any movement had been seen since yesterday afternoon. A few minutes later, the police went into action. As dawn approached, the building was completely surrounded by an emergency response team, and at 6 a.m., tear gas was fired into the apartment. The police waited outside for Baldwin to come out. When he didn't, the signal was given to make the next move. Stun grenades were flung into the apartment, another attempt to get Baldwin to come out. Still, there was no response from inside. That's when police stormed the building. Several rounds of shots were heard, and within minutes, it was over. Gary Flynn of the Seattle Police Department detailed what happened in the building. The individual was inside the apartment and came out one of the officers with a long saber type uh, device. He had uh, just simply waited for somebody to approach him. He took a swipe at one of the officers, hit him on the knee, uh, it's a very superficial wound, and retreated then again into uh, the bathroom, uh, stayed in the bathroom until the officers approached him again, and he came at the officers a second time with this saber or sword. and. Uh, the officers shot him and removed him from the apartment into the police car. He was taken to Harborview Medical Center. Detective Michael Rayburn was transported to Harborview just around 1 o'clock. The hospital is only a few blocks from where he was stabbed. From the minute he arrived, his condition was critical. A full-force trauma team fought to save him. The stab wound to his chest caused a severe blood loss, and Seattle police officers pitched in to deliver much-needed blood to Harborview. The fight for Rayburn's life lasted close to an hour. At the end, he was in the operating room. 207 today, one of our officers died. Um, he had been on an eviction. Soon after the officer's death was announced, the emergency room was filled with both King County and Seattle police officers. They said they came to comfort each other and to be with Rayburn's family. Detective Rayburn's family is from Kent. He is survived by his wife, Linda, and two sons. Tonight, his fellow police officers are also mourning his death, but they're also remembering his contribution to King County. That's true. He'd been on 12 years. Uh, very, very well thought of officer. The King County Police Department is working with the Rayburn family to schedule services. Kathy Marshall, Channel 7 Eyewitness News.